from the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. Once again, we are so delighted to be with you for this program and to share the global headlines that affects all of our lives and will affect the future. The first one, Ahmadinejad stresses Iran and China's role in establishing a new world order. Remember that as we discuss all these things today. Then Obama takes control of the European Union and Pakistani plea. Make Obama the supreme Islamic leader. That is quite a plea that they are making for our president. We'll examine that in a moment, too. But first of all, you have heard Jack speak about the New World Order so very often on this program. And now I think you're reading about it an awful lot. And we're going to relate it uh, to all of us the, today. I want to go back just for a moment, though. It's nothing new. It started way back when, and Jack, uh, before we went on the program today, you were refreshing my memory as to when it really did start. It was way back. Hundreds of years ago, and Rexella, the main religions backing it were the Rosicrucians and the Zoroastrians. Now, they're not that well known today, but they're still in existence. And one of their missionaries left Egypt and went to Austria, and he met Adam Wiesoft, a professor of law at the University of Ingolstadt. And they started working together. And this man, Wiesoft, was a brilliant man. And it wasn't long until they found someone who would sponsor it. His name was Mayor Rothschild. And he got all of his millionaire friends together, and that was the beginning of the New World Order. And that was way back there, as I said, uh, at the beginning of uh, the 18th century. Well, now, we're going to get into some names here because we could give you 200 names since 1779, but these are names today. We've got 50 of them here. We're only going to give you 12 because you're going to hear who's behind this. This is not some theory. This is real. And Rexel, you go ahead and start. And in the meantime, because you're a sweet chick and young, and I'm not in such good condition, I have to put glasses on. Go ahead, hon. <laughs> yes, I will. Well, he gave me a list here. It's called the New World Order. I'm going to go to 1910. And it is the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace is formed, embracing a new government. 1922, the Council of Foreign Relations endorses the world government. And 1940, the New World Order by H.G. Wells proposes a socialist and collectivist one world state. Now you're going to start knowing names. 1945, President Truman endorses a world government. 1950, on February 17th, Council of Foreign Relations member James Warburg tells the subcommittee, we shall have a world government whether or not we like it. The question is only whether world government will be achieved by consent or by conquest. And it's Whoa. both, as you're going to hear today. All right, 1962, Nelson Rockefeller claims a new world order is needed as the old order is crumbling. Richard Nixon, 1967, calls for a new world order, and Robert Kennedy calls for a new world society. 1977, President Carter appoints new world proponents to key positions in that global government. And then again, 1991, a new world order is praised in State of the Union address by President Bush, Sr. 1996, the United Nations 420-page report entitled, Our Global Neighborhood is a Plan for Global Government. All right, now, as Jack mentioned, there are 50 statements we could have made. We did about 11 or 12 there. And um, Jack was telling me about the seven organizations that promoted these 50 statements. Who were those seven organizations, Jack? What were they? Well, in their existence right now, they form the basis of the European Union at this moment. Uh, I already talked about the Illuminati. Then 
of course, the Bilderbergs, the Council of Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Club of Rome, the United Nations, and the New Age Movement, all seven promoting a world government. All right, we are going to go on with our headlines here in just a moment, but in 1993, the Council of Foreign Relations member and trilateralist Henry Kissinger wrote about NAFTA. Remember that name, NAFTA? I remember that. The first step toward the new world government. Who is he saying right now could head up the new world order? Well, there you see it again, O Rexel. You've used this so often. Yes, I have. And it is so relevant to what we're talking about. Kissinger, Obama, primed to create new world order. Now, remember, that goes back to 1993 when he talked about having a new world order. Henry Kissinger, again, the world must forge a new order or retreat to chaos. And a shocking statement, Barack Obama has become the de facto president of the European Union, said Jean Guatemir in his blog in France's Liberation. The newly elected President Van Rompuy has little to say as Obama takes control. Now, takes control of the European Union, yes. He meets once a month via telephone. The three largest countries in the European Union, England, France, and Germany. And, of course, he tells them what direction to go, and they are willing to do it. So, Jack, could he really become the president of the European Union? Yes, and in a minute you're going to hear that Ahmadinejad of Iran is also pulling together another group for another new world order, and they want him. Pakistan says we'd like him for our Islamic leader. And then there are four nations right now begging him to become the one who sets up the peace between uh, the Jews and the Muslims. And of course, one of those is Pakistan, and again, Lebanon, Syria, and the Palestinians. What a day to be alive. Now, let me explain something. The Bible teaches that there will be ten toes and ten horns in the development of this new world order for the European side. And that is Daniel 2, 41 and 42, the ten toes on the image. And then you've got Daniel 7, verses 7, 8, 20, 24 for the ten horns on the beast. And then you have Revelation 12, 3, Revelation 13, 1, and Revelation 17, verses 3, 7, 12, and 16. But we're going to show you later that when the other block comes in, they're going to have to do some recalculating because the ten nations are all European now. And the image I'm going to show you in a little while, there are two legs. One is the Roman Empire, the other is the Islamic Empire. One was situated in Rome, the other was situated in Constantinople, which is Turkey, the leading powerful nation of Islam, along with Iran at this hour in history. Well, Jack, so those two legs are going to come together yes. sometime. Yes. We're going to talk about that in a moment. And they're going to form the new world government. Yes, but All before right. they do, read this next batch. Oh, oh this I is will. unbelievable, Well, folks. this has to do with Ahmadinejad. <laughs> He's always saying something of Iran. He says the nations are tired of the present world order. There he goes. And the revolutions in the Middle East, he says, indicate the need for a new world order. There it is, Iran's supreme leader, Egypt unrest, inspired by our Islamic revolution. And then Iranian speaker terms revolutions in Tunisia, Egypt, Islamic awakening. And Iranian president, world people tired of Western world government or world order. And Ahmadinejad stresses need for new world order. And again, here he's quoted Ahmadinejad and Chavez say united to change world order. Ahmadinejad, Iran and Syria will create a new world order. Ahmadinejad stresses Iran and China's role in establishing new world order. Wow. So you see that there seem to be two groups, the European Union, and they say, we want a new world order. We're dividing the world in 10 uh, sections. And then you have the Islamic world who is saying, we want a new world order. There are two there, Jack. 
can they come together? They have to because it's going to become a global new world order. Every nation upon the face of the earth. And for ages I had never seen that this other leg would have anything to do. I just always talked about the Roman part, the European Union, and never thought about Turkey, Constantinople, even in my book, Revelation Revealed. So now I see the two. So what is the answer? Is it just 10 nations, just 10 kings? No, you're seeing right now the dissolution of many of the dictators in the Muslim world, and that has to come because when the dictator of the new world order arrives, there can only be one who's in charge of the world. And so now I got into my history books and I was shocked because I always just thought it was 10 nations, as you've heard me say for years. But I found out that there was a rabbi by the name of Hegian who said, a Gentile monarchy is coming to power and they will divide the world into a 10 division world government, world order. And at that time, it will be the announcement that our Messiah is about to appear. Their Messiah is our Christ. And oh, I love what Jerome, who wrote the Latin Vulgate, said. When we see, and this is 1,700 years ago, a 10 division world empire, it's the announcement that Jesus is about to return to set up his kingdom here on earth. This is something. Now, listen, to the Club of Rome, one of the seven members setting up the New World Order, along with the Bilbergs, as we've said, has already drawn up the plans. Here they are. Number one, America, Canada, and Mexico. Number two, South America. Number three, Australia and New Zealand. Number four, Western Europe. Number five, Eastern Europe. Number six, Japan. Number seven, South Asia. Oh, Rexel, this is shocking. Number eight is Central Asia. Number nine is North Africa and all the Middle East. There's Islam. And number 10 is the rest of Africa. Now, this is exciting. Numbers one through six, the European Union. Number seven through 10, the Islamic world. It's getting ready, and this is the last sign. We're not going to be around much longer. Jesus is coming. But let me tell you one more thing now. The Bible says in Revelation 17, 10, there will only be seven world empires. Five are fallen, one is, and one is yet to come for seven. All right, who are the first grouping of five? Number one was Assyria, and that is Genesis 2.14. Number two, Egypt, Genesis 12.10. Number three, Babylon, and that's Daniel 1.1. 1, 1. Number four, the Medes and the Persians, Daniel 5.28 and 8.20. Number five, Greece, that's Daniel 8.21 and 10.20. And finally, Rome, <laughs> number six. Why do I make such emphasis there? And of course, that's Daniel 9.24 and 26 and Romans 1.7 because... The final one is revived Rome, the European Union. It's here, and two different groups, two different legs are calling for our president to have a great part of this movement. Now, put that image on the screen for me a minute. God showed me something shocking. This was meant to be the powers of the world that Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream, and Daniel explained it all. But there's one thing I've never said on the air, and that's this. In Daniel 2.45, Christ appears as a stone, and he is the rock, 1 Corinthians 10.4, and he smashes the feet of this image, and all the metals are lying around. Hmm. But when does Christ do that? When he returns. Oh, I got goosebumps this week, Rex Zella. Yeah. I believe now that this could be the image of Revelation 13, verses 16 to 18, that gives the mark, because he's going to set that image in the temple. And it's a replica of the world dictator, but it doesn't mean it has to be him. It's an honor to him, to glorify him. This could be the very image that they saw 20.